A capstone is a class feature a character gains for hitting level 20 in a specific class. So in this video, we'll be looking at the best of these abilities that most players never get to see in an average game. Starting off this list at number 10, we have Perfect Self. This is the capstone ability for the monk class. A good number of the capstone abilities give the level 20 character the ability to have more access to their class's primary resource, like spells. In the case of the monk, Perfect Self does this by giving them 4 key points whenever they roll initiative while they have 0 key points. This basically makes it so that, no matter how many consecutive fights you have, the monk will always have some key available to use their abilities. That said, the limitation of having exactly 0 key to get any use out of this makes it not the best resource management capstone. It makes it awkward if you end a fight and have less than 4 key but more than 0, then you're just worse off than if you had expended all of those key points. Also, key is one of the class resources that restores on a short rest. So even if you're in a hectic situation with lots of fight and a single adventuring day, you can often short rest back up to your full 20 key points. That makes this a niche capstone ability, and so it only takes the 10th spot on this list. Taking it to the number 9 spot, we have Primal Champion, the capstone ability for Barbarians. It has the fairly straightforward effect of increasing the Barbarian strength and constitution scores by 4 each. More importantly, it also raises the typical maximum you can natively have this ability score from 20 to 24 for strength and constitution, meaning a Barbarian who's already gotten to their previous maximum of 20 in both stats still benefits from this. And getting a plus 8 to your total ability scores is nothing to scoff at. The constitution increase alone is 40 extra hit points immediately upon hitting level 20, which is obviously even stronger on a Barbarian than most classes because of Rage's damage reduction and Barbarians being able to add constitution to their armor class while not wearing armor. So Barbarian could potentially have an unassisted 22 armor class of just Dexterity and Constitution if they have the investment for it. One potential downside to this is the Strength bonus can often fall flat on a level 20 character, as the Belts of Giant Strength can raise you beyond 24. That being said, freeing up an Attunement slot might be worthwhile, but the Belt of Storm Giant Strength sets your Strength to 29, so you could end up wasting half the Capstone's value. Still, if you don't have access to these kinds of items, then it's a very strong combat benefit as no Barbarian is going to turn down a plus 2 to hit and damage in addition to 40 maximum hit points. Next up at number 8 we have Sorceress Restoration, the capstone ability for the Sorcerer. It states that whenever you take a short rest, you regain 4 expended sorcery points. While this reads similarly to the Monk's Perfect Self ability mentioned previously, it's crucially different in a few ways. First, you don't have to be at 0 sorcery points to regain them, so you can get them back whenever you take a short rest, no restrictions. Secondly, it requires a short rest instead of happening automatically at the start of a fight. While this is worse, it's not so bad because sorcery points, unlike key points, do not fully restore on a short rest. So this ability adds a lot of value to the short rest that sorcerers lack compared to other classes. The last and most significant difference is that sorcery points are much more powerful than key points. Not only are metamagic options in general capable of incredible game-breaking feats, but any excess sorcery points can be transmitted into spell slots using the Sorcerer's Flexible Casting ability. This means you can regain some low-level spells for free before your short rest by transforming some sorcery points and then regenerating some sorcery points thanks to this. Sorcery points are one of the most limited resource-based abilities in the game due to their high power, high point investment as some of the more powerful effects require three or more, and generally have an inability to be regenerated outside of a long rest. This makes Sorcery Restoration a very solid capstone ability for sorcerers who like to use up a lot of their spells and sorcery points, making the sorcerer's most powerful feature usable more often. While this does not necessarily increase the sorcerer's actual power, it does make the sorcerer a lot more effective. And at number 7, we have Signature Spell, the wizard capstone ability. It states that the wizard can choose two different spells of their level or lower, and can cast each spell once without expending any spell slots so long as the spells cast at their level or below. This functionally gives a wizard two free third level spells, and these uses regenerate on a short or long rest. An evocation wizard might want a free lightning bolt and a fireball, or an enchantment wizard might like something like a free suggestion or hypnotic pattern in their back pocket on every short rest. This is a bit more spell casting firepower than the Sorcerer's Restoration Capstone, which is only regenerating about one third level spell through flexible casting, though repeated uses of Sorcerer Restoration can outpace Signature Spells enough time is available. Another fun advantage of Signature Spell is those two spell choices always count as prepared and don't count against your number of spells prepared, which gives the wizard a little more flexibility in what spells they can prepare on a given day. Having two of your lower level staple spells always available gives a lot of room for including more utility options on your spell list. It also means you'll never be caught without these core low-level spells, even if your spellbook is taken from you somehow. Signature Spells doesn't really change how a wizard operates significantly, but much like Source's Restoration or Perfect Self, it does keep the wizard more active in tossing out more spells over the course of an adventuring day. 
And at number 6, we have Eldridge Master, the Warlock's Capstone ability. It states you can spend 1 minute petitioning your patron to restore all of your extended spell slots from your packed magic feature. At level 20, this means 4 5th level spell slots. While the 1 minute means that it can't be pulled off in combat, it also means that a Warlock no longer needs a short rest to regain all of their expended spell slots. Being able to dump 4 5th level spell slots every fight, spend a minute and go right back into the next one at full power, is a pretty impressive way to warp back-to-back -back encounters. Compared to the previous resource regeneration abilities on this list, this one obviously stands out greatly as 4 5th level spells dwarfs 2 short rest 3rd level spells that the wizard's signature spell can give them. Though in the case where short resting is an available option, the warlock could already do that with how pack magic works. While short rest can be interrupted, a 1 minute prayer is much harder to hinder. You could just use this immediately after a fight while the other players loot the bodies and be back to full power again. Anything that could interrupt that would more than likely have been part of the previous battle. It's an incredibly powerful resource management ability, which is why it takes this spot over the wizards, sorcerers, and monks capstones, which all do similar things. Slotting into the number 5 spot, we have the Paladin Sacred Oath subclass feature. The Paladin is a bit odd in that it's the only class where the capstone is tied to their subclass. This means every single subclass of Paladin has a different capstone ability. That said, there is a common theme throughout most of them, and that they grant the Paladin a very powerful transformation that embodies their Sacred Oath. Some of them are more powerful than others, but generally speaking, all of them are incredible. The player's handbook examples includes the Oath of the Ancients Elder Champion transformation, which gives the Paladin 10 hit points at the start of every turn, the ability to cast any spell they have that usually cause an action as a bonus action, and giving creatures within 10 feet of you disadvantage on saves against your spells and channel divinity abilities. The Oath of Devotion gives you a Holy Nimbus transformation that causes bright light in a 30 foot radius that burns enemy for 10 radiant damage a turn, giving them some pretty decent AoE damage. You also gain advantage on saving throws against fiends and undead, meaning powerful late game boss monsters like demons, devils, liches, and the like are far less dangerous. Oath of Vengeance gives you an Avenging Angel transformation that gives you a 60 foot fly speed and a fear aura that lasts for a full hour. All of these abilities are great capstones in their own right, and you'd be hard pressed to find a Paladin capstone that wasn't a huge boon to the character. And at number 4, we have Stroke of Luck, the Rogue's capstone ability. Moving away from the resource management abilities, we have a fairly unique ability for the Rogue. Stroke of Luck states that once per short or long rest, you can choose to turn any miss into a hit. Alternatively, if you fail an ability check, you can choose to treat the d20 roll as if it rolled a 20 instead. Functionally, the Rogue can just alter fate and change nearly any failure into a success. It's hard to overstate just how useful this ability can be. There is an endless number of situations where you're forced to make ability checks and just saying I rolled a 20 on a crucial check isn't just game changing, but sometimes campaign changing. It's like the player gets a legendary resistance, but for their attack or ability checks. While rolling a 20 on ability check isn't an automatic success, if it doesn't succeed then there likely should have never been a roll in the first place since the task was impossible. This makes rogues the master of almost any situation. Even ability checks you're bad at, suddenly you're getting 21s on them consistently. This builds on the rogue's previous class abilities like expertise and reliable talent that makes them near infallible in a few specific skills. With this, they become good at every skill. That said, it isn't that amazing in combat. At level 20, a rogue isn't missing very often in the first place, and securing one hit in a fight is often about as valuable as a single bardic inspiration or channel divinity usage. Good, but not incredible. Still, the fact that it is infinitely useful outside of combat earns Stroke of Luck a higher spot on this list. Coming in at number 3, we have Soul of Artifice, which as the name suggests, is the Artificer's Capstone ability, which grants them two benefits. The first is that you get a plus one to all saving throws equal to the number of items you're attuned to. The second lets you, when reduced to zero hit points, use a reaction to instead drop to one hit point by ending one of your infusions. Both of these abilities are excellent. The fact that a level 20 Artificer can attune to 6 items means this is a plus 6 to all saving throws. That is the same as getting proficiency in every save as the level 20 proficiency bonus is 6. But this is even better than that as, for the saves that you are already proficient in, you are getting a plus 6 on top of that for a minimum of plus 12 to that save. As for the second ability, it's basically a multi-use version of the already strong Relentless Endurance racial ability of the Half-Orcs. At level 20, an Artificer can have 6 infusions active, which translates to 6 chances of staying up instead of going down when you hit 0 hit points. Even though it eats up in reaction, that's close to as powerful as having 6 death ward spells cast on you. Either ability would be highly competitive capstone in their own right, but both together makes a Soul of Artifice one of the best capstones in the game. Coming in at our number 2 spot, we have the Arc Druid. As you might expect, Arc Druid is the Druid's capstone ability. Another fairly straightforward capstone, it states that the druid now has endless uses of their wild shape class feature. 
Now, you could classify this in the same category as the previously mentioned Signature Spell, Sorceress Restoration, Perfect Self, and Eldred's Master Capstones as a resource management capstone, but it's a bit crazier than that. It's less resource management and resource elimination as you no longer restrict it to a set number of uses. Similar to the Paladin's Capstone, it interacts with the subclasses of Druids differently since a lot of them use Wild Shape as a resource to fuel their other abilities, even if it's technically the same ability for all of them. It makes Moon Druids nearly unkillable shapeshifters who constantly take an animal form and keep doing so indefinitely, giving them an infinite pool of hit points for your enemies to chew through. If your enemies can't take you down in one turn through your animal form and your base form, then they cannot kill you. Spore Druids can constantly refill their Symbionic Entity ability that, at level 20, gives them 40 temporary hit points, giving them a similarly massive pool of health. Star Druids can stay in their various starry forms permanently, which is where most of the subclass's power is tied to. The only druid that doesn't get much out of this is the Circle of the Land Druid, and even they can do an imitation of the Moon Druid's infinite hit points by turning into a CR1 beast constantly, as their level 18 beast spells ability lets them cast spells while in beast form. It's an absurd ability that takes one of the most powerful abilities in the game in its own right, Wild Shape, and takes away the only real limitation it had. Finally, shining down on high in the number one spot, we have Divine Intervention's improvement, the Cleric's Capstone ability. Similar to the Druid, the Cleric's Capstone modifies one of their previous abilities. Divine Intervention typically lets a Cleric beseech their deity for direct assistance. The Cleric then rolls a d100, and if the result is equal to or lower than their level, the god will heed their prayer. Now, typically, this ability is treated as either a Hail Mary in a desperate situation, or something you attempt to do multiple times over the course of several days until it works. But Divine Intervention's improvement makes it so you automatically succeed. So, instead of a desperate action, you can, with 100% certainty, have your god intervene on your behalf. Now, if you make a more abstract request, then it's up to your DM's interpretation what actually happens. And that said, in the text of Divine Intervention, it says that the effect of any cleric spell will be appropriate. What that means is, whenever the cleric wants, they can potentially cast a 9th level spell without even having to really cast it. That lets a cleric cast absurd spells like Gate or Heal without an enemy counterspell in them, as you're not actually casting the spell. You can cast True Resurrection in the middle of combat to revive an ally who got disintegrated without having to worry about the 1 hour cast time or the 25,000 gold worth of diamonds that it normally requires. Frankly, just having access to a free 9th level spell already makes this the most powerful ability on this list by far, and it has 9 infinite uses on top of that limited only by the imagination of your DM's acceptance, making this not just the most powerful ability, but also the most interesting one. There's a lot of roleplay value in how you choose to beseech your god, and what kind of effects your god grants you. While the other abilities on this list might be powerful or useful in various ways, nothing comes close to ringing up god and having him step in to deal with the problem at hand. Alright, and that's the list. Are there any other capstone abilities you think I should have included in this list? Or do you have any ideas for other videos just like this one? If so, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments below.